Hi, and welcome to another Entrepreneur Stories special episode. I'm here with Kenny Hendricks. He is a director of corporate development at Telenet, but special not only because we're going to speak about the venture Kenny is behind the park, we are actually at the park. Welcome, Kenny, oh. and thank you for having us. So my first question to Kenny is, how did this start? How did you want to pivot everything you were doing towards the future of entertainment and build the park? First of all, thank you for having me, Alfonso. So no, I think uh, Tillet always had the ambition, the vision of, of balancing at the intersection of, of technology and entertainment. And uh, we truly believe that if we can build something on that intersection, we can create something beautiful. And for us in entertainment, this was uh, experiences. We wanted to build an experience. We want to build an experience which can be done together, not in isolation, but a community, because created entertainment is being done shareable together. And the third point was it should be participating. So you want to interact with the content, not just purely as a, as a couch potato, consuming content passively, but how can you alter the storyline, how it can be immersed. And those three pillars with a layover of technology, being it IoT, AR, VR, whatever are, I think that would unlock beautiful immersive stuff. And that's exactly what we're trying to do in the park. And you are. I mean, I've tried it out yeah. and it's time flies by. It's, you're in virtual reality. You see other people. You're yeah. moving around. But going back to the day that this started at Telenet, you had the go for entertainment and technology or did you sell in the idea we should actually go down this direction and we need to go into building a venture? Is that? Well, I think we started like entertainment. I we're an entertainment company because Telenet has always been... Uh, a company who is a pioneer in pushing new technologies towards the consumers. Um, this venture is in the extension of the same thing. So it's in our DNA, investing in new technologies by bringing new services and products to the consumer. Of course, it's quite a stretch from our core business, but in the end, it's a perfect match. And did you know you were onto something from the day you saw the post-its and the potential in the room, you're onto something you're gonna have a startup, you're gonna build it from scratch, and we gotta put milestones together. Was that the way you No, I think it, it grew more organically. I think um, we took the post-it exercise, and often the post-it exercise kind of ends after a couple of sessions, you have a beautiful PowerPoint presentation. Uh, but luckily, this time, maybe it's because the momentum is right, maybe the idea was perfect, uh, maybe we have the right senior management team in place who's supportive of new ideas. Uh, we got additional budget funds, to really start building uh, this venture. So it's uh, for us also a, a new way of doing innovation. I think uh, Tenzo's company is doing Horizon One innovation. So innovation next to the core, mm -hmm. the same product to other consumers or a different product to the same consumer. So deep selling. This is, a, uh, this is one of the times that we're doing uh, Horizon 2.3 uh, in a different way. Uh, it has been a great journey, I think, so oh, far. Fantastic. And when you look back, I mean, what did you say were the key milestones throughout the park? Was it the idea, then validating the idea, creating the business plan? Where did you think you had to focus more energy and effort to make sure that this is going to be a hit success? Yeah, I think first of all, it was really desk research, the minds, the bright minds that we had at Telnet and at Bundle combining to coming with the, the post-its. Uh, after that, I think the focus was, is this really an idea? Is there Uber out consumer appetite? So it was the, the second biggest one. So we traveled, at least the team traveled across the world to check the different technologies, to, to look at consumers, what they were thinking, is their appetite or not. And then the third bit, I think, uh, was more on the partnership side. So we're not investing in new technology as such, but we're investing in partnerships. And uh, the third element was really, how can we make sure there's a win-win situation with the partners? Because we're working with other startups, and for a corporate to work with a startup, it's always a difficult situation because corporates want to have long-term payments. Uh, it needs to be very high, high level SLRs. Uh, but in this case, we think we found a great win-win between everybody and uh, there's a result again. And you told me that there's, there was a great alignment in where Telenet is today yeah. and where senior management. Did you experience any changes in that senior management and have to pitch and re-pitch or it was just perfect and smooth traveling. Okay, there's always the money issue where we yeah. have to ask for more investment to grow. Um, but was it smooth? I think from that aspect, it was quite smooth. I think uh, 
we had quite some empowerment. So it was not that we had to report every week to SLT, what is the status? I think they kind of looked at it as a new way of doing innovation. Like let's say, we don't gonna kill it with too much governance. So there was no governance. We did a little bit our own thing. Of course, within the framework that was available, but limited governance, uh, limited uh, looking over the shoulders. They trusted the people who were working on it. And I think that makes sense. Uh, uh, um, innovative stuff cannot be boxed in, in timelines, in milestones. I think we shifted the planning of ours quite a few times, but each time for the better. Uh, and I think that was one of the best things I've had, I think, with Internet is the, the opportunity to, to deviate from the beat and track that we have, which makes sense for Horizon 1 innovation. But if you do other stuff, you need to have other tools, other processes, and that's what we try to put in place in a more organic fashion. And in this process, which was very quick, yeah. what was your favorite part? And which one would you like to maybe revisit or we would revisit if you could? To be honest, I, I wouldn't revisit too much. The only thing I would do is to move even faster, I think. Uh, because in the end, indeed, we went fast. I think went from a post-it, a couple of post-its, to actual launching the company in, let's say, 12 to 13 months, which is rather fast, I think, even for, for a startup. Um, but again, I think we ticked all the boxes, customer validation, uh, technology, uh, the partnership setup. But in the end, it's all about doing the stuff and having your feet in the ground and getting the actual experience and feedback from consumers and the way of working with partners. I think uh, we took a certain route. Whether we took the right route, maybe, maybe not. I think the team who's now in place is really doing a great job in, in making mistakes, but quickly solving them. Mm -hmm. And if I could change anything, I would have to move faster and even launch sooner than we have done. Fantastic. Well, that's a, that's a yeah. demanding yeah. ask from yeah. everyone, but I'm sure the excitement was there. Yeah. And today, do you still feel at Telenet that, how is the park viewed? Is it a source of innovation coming into the company? Is it, is it an independent entity from the company? How is that working? I think it's, it gets a couple of angles. I think it's it definitely is a source of innovation for the company because it, it shows that Telenet is able to not just think about post-its and PowerPoints and Excels, but also actually delivering stuff. And that creates a kind of enthusiasm with the other people like, hmm, if I have a good idea and it makes sense and it has a solid and sound business plan, we can deliver this kind of stuff very quickly. So that's more the inspiring stuff. So I think it makes sense. The second bit is uh, it's completely outside of the company. Yes, so of course, we are, we're owning uh, the park together uh, with a partner, um, but we didn't put it in the company because it's still a very yeah, fragile, embryonic business. And mm -hmm. if we would put mm -hmm. it again mm -hmm. into business as usual with Telnet, there would be much more chance that governance, uh, yeah, rigid milestones are being put on the company and that would make it more difficult, I think. I think this company needs more oxygen or a different kind of oxygen, maybe the same amount but different oxygen than our existing business. So that's what we want to put it aside. And specific to the park, and then I want to shift gears a little bit. I've played the zombie game. Yeah. How many zombies have you shot? Well, honestly, I can't recall anymore. <laughs> I think uh, I've played a couple of times, but each time you try to try to beat your best score, so your personal best. So I think uh, next time you should try again. I, I have to. I have to yeah. practice a lot. Let's shift gears a little bit to entrepreneurship. Yeah. I mean, how, how does Telenet? foster entrepreneurship in your view? And how do you, do you think you'll be involved in more entrepreneurship tracks in the future? Oh, yes, I think, I think we foster uh, innovation and I think entrepreneurship is a key element. I think there is not a single company, of course, there are a few companies are really focusing on innovation as such, but normally every company, in my opinion, uh, innovation is something that is being done on top. Mm -hmm. So, also in our company, there is room for innovation, but it's not always your only project. It's on top of what you're doing, and you have a lot of work, you have the people who have a lot of energy, and they, have, they can get additional energy out of working on these kind of projects. And I think um, it's always on top. So do we foster innovation? Yes, we definitely do. Uh, can it be better? Probably also, yes. Uh, so uh, well, I think the room and the budget and the financial means that we have are putting putting put in place on a, on a proper way, I think, and allowing for innovation, which is in the current circumstances, mm -hmm. the economical mm -hmm. that we're in, not always that easy, I think. And how do you, do you feel different as an entrepreneur within a big company, within a mothership? Do you think there's qualities that 
people look and find, oh, he's the entrepreneur that kind of set you apart? Well, I think, and that's coming back because innovation is not done in silo because you also need to have the buy-in. I think the key element that you need to do is to build bridges, is to make sure that you can touch, you can link, or you have a network within the company where you can bring the right people together. And in the end, having right and being right is two different things. So I can have the best ideas in the world, but probably you also have great ideas and the other ones have better ideas than I do probably. But it's about bringing great ideas to, to execution and therefore you can't do it on yourself, you need the people. And I think that's what an entrepreneur does, is connecting the right people together in the company and be able to build a story around it and to bring it to a high level and sell it to management that it's a good idea and that the company, uh, it makes sense for the company to, to go forward. To go for it. And, and it sounds to me like I'm going to see you in a lot more entrepreneurship treks in your career because it seems like you're yeah. hooked on it. What keeps you going? What incentivizes you to become an entrepreneur, to find these new businesses within businesses? Honestly, I'm, I, like the, I like the combination of both. So I think it makes sense to have a, a solid understanding of the business that we're in. But at the same point in time, I think it is essential to come up with new ideas and to, to deliver new services and products. Uh, because, on the event, because otherwise, in the end, you get a cold situation and you get stuck in your, your beautiful world and you don't think about anything else anymore. And the reason why I, what, because I love it, is I don't think I am an entrepreneur. Maybe I'm too risk averse. Maybe I don't like to have the, the continuous pressure on my shoulder of delivering the numbers. Uh, but I do believe I am a good entrepreneur. Because I think I have the corporate mindset. I think uh, I know how to work with startups and to build these kind of setups. So for me, it's also a perfect fit with my capabilities. I will probably never say never uh, being able to run the park as such because that's not my core DNA. That doesn't trigger me. Uh, delivering the next milestone month after month after month. Other people are much more engaged and driven by that. Uh, I'm much more energized by thinking about the next thing and bring it towards a level of execution, which is um, then ready to be handed over to people who are having other capabilities. Hey, you can't do everything yourself. That's great, because you were just answered a question I had was, how, why don't you choose the entrepreneur path? But you just jumped yeah. ahead without knowing I was going to ask you that. Do you see the park expanding in the future? Uh, I dream about the park expanding, uh, and I truly believe there is a lot of potential in the park expanding, but again, it will all depend. Uh, are we really addressing the consumer need? Uh, do we, is it the right time to do so? Uh, for the moment, the stars are still aligned. Hopefully, we can get them aligned and keep them aligned. But yes, I do believe it's, there's a lot of potential in it. And it's not purely this setup, but also what you're seeing in the market. I think VR, immersive entertainment, it's on the rise. Um, it's embryonic, so it, whether the direction that we've chosen is the right one, I can't say. Uh, but will the park pivot in the right direction? Pretty sure we will. So yes, I think we'll, there's a bright future for the park ahead of us, I think, and for all other VR entertainment uh, ventures in the space. Kenny, I only have two more questions, because yeah. I know you are very busy. And one of the questions I have is, in regards to teams and from your experience in entrepreneurship, is it, what is key to having a motivated team that you can stick with for the duration of the project, or do you actually believe that the team should recycle itself throughout the project? Well, I think first of all, to get them motivated is just having a cool project. And normally, projects like the park or new innovation stuff always excite people to work on. So I think on the motivational part, I think it's okay. The second part is getting um, commitment from management that the people can work on these projects, eh? because all, there's work enough. So, Telnet can do no innovation and still have 100% occupancy rate of all the employees. So it means it's on top of them. Or they need to shift off a little bit of their time, which we're doing on business as usual. So having commitment from management that they can spend time on that one is also, is also key for me. And I think whether the, the people need to shift, yes, truly believe. The same thing with me. So would it make sense to keep me in the park today? Probably not. Would I have added value? Yes. But would other people have more added value than me? For sure. So I think it's also necessary that in each cycle, in each maturity level of a company, whether that's in corporate venturing, whether that's in a real company, uh, there are stages, and each stage needs different people, different mindset, different capabilities. That doesn't mean that the other people are bad or not fit to do it. 
It's just that it can go faster and much more accelerated and more, with more value add than uh, sticking with the same thing continuously, in my opinion. I have a question from Paul Ellingstad, who we interviewed. And his question is, when you take away all the labels, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, innovation, take away the contribution and the recognition and the ego of what you've done, how do you become someone who helps drive the movement of innovation and entrepreneurship and especially change? How do you become someone who's a catalyst for others to know you can change and embrace this too? Okay, good question. I think uh, for me, the question of Paul is for me the definition of an entrepreneur. I think an entrepreneur, uh, by doing this, by making, making the bridges between others and by delivering a project, it per definition enthusiasmizes other people. It becomes that kind of beacon which says, this company does innovation. This company can deliver new stuff on top of what we're doing every day. And that's not anything to do about stripping away the ego and that kind of stuff. For me, an entrepreneur, everybody has an ego, everybody has stuff and wants to have recognition. But I think by delivering this stuff and by building the bridges, uh, I truly believe that it will foster more innovation and it, it will also stimulate others to be part of these kind of projects down the road. And that's exactly what we're also seeing at Telnet. I think the park was a great um, journey we're on. But of course, as already mentioned, we're building other stuff and we're working on more innovation. And the, the enthusiasm, uh, the spirit within the company is only increasing to join these new projects and to embark on these new journeys that we're heading for. Innovation breeds innovation. Definitely. I have to ask you one more thing. What can I ask the next entrepreneur we interview? What really stands, what really makes a difference and what does she believe or he believes, what makes uh, entrepreneurship more powerful uh, than entrepreneurship? What makes entrepreneurship more powerful than entrepreneurship? Yes. I'll make sure I'll ask yeah. that. Okay. Kenny, superstar, yeah. I loved being here in the park with you. Thank you Thank so you. much. No worries. It's a pleasure. You heard it from Kenny. Amongst so many things, he said, work on cool projects and build bridges. Make sure you have those bridges in your corporate environment. Leverage. I heard it here. You heard it too. A little bit of housekeeping for me. Thank you for watching. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe below or touch the bell for notifications. We come out every two weeks. We're also available in podcast form on all platforms. And if you are listening on podcast, you can leave a voicemail on Anchor and we'll play it back. In regards to comments, feel free to leave them here. Questions for us questions for Kenny, and suggestions on topics you'd like to have covered in this short program. Last ask from me, if you're an entrepreneur or know of an entrepreneur, please get in touch. We want to hear your story. Thank you for watching. This was Entrepreneur Stories. See you soon.